Um, welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to be talking about how to reuse the energy of um, an OpenStack cloud. So that's what Leaf Cloud does. We're going to talk about the why. We are going to talk about um, the how. And I want to introduce myself. I'm Yegor von Updorp. I'll be giving this talk with Stig. Hi, everyone. I'm Stig Telfer. Um, OK, so let's start with the why. So I think everyone knows the problem of the greenhouse gases. And a big chunk of the greenhouse gases that get emitted are caused by power plants. I mean, the electricity um, industry is, uh, is a big polluter. So they try to mitigate this problem. Oops. All right. Um, they try to mitigate this problem by generating um, green energy. So they use, um, for example, windmills. And, and uh, these are green power plants. But if all that electricity goes straight to data centers, the net result isn't that great. Um, the, the problem doesn't really change. So how much power do data centers use? Uh, that would be about 3% of all the electricity that is used in the Netherlands. Um, let's put that into a bit of um, context. So if you look at this, data centers, and you compare it to the NS, which is the, the Dutch railway, the data centers actually use three times more energy, and it uses more energy than the entire railway system of the Netherlands combined and the city of Amsterdam, which is, is huge. And it's a huge chunk of all the wind energy that we produce. And we have a lot of wind in the Netherlands. It's a, it's a windy country. So a question for you. How much? Um, how much elect, uh, CO2 emissions does an 8V CPU Kubernetes node cause in one year? Is that 500 grams, 50 kilograms, or 500 kilograms? Just, just think about these numbers for a little bit. So the answer is it's over 500 kilograms a year. And if you instead look at a, at a GPU node, um, the, the number increases a lot. It's five times higher. And you go halfway around the world in a car for that. So where, where does, these, uh, does this emission come from? Um, this is based on, on an uh, electricity mix. So 70% of this uh, is not renewable, and 30% is. It's a, it's a normal mix. And what you actually see in this picture is that most of the emissions actually come from the data center itself, and not from the machines inside. So that's the old situations where we build data centers that contain a lot of servers and um, you have high power air conditioning or, or chillers, which are, they are very inefficient and polluting. And all the electricity is converted into heat, which is just wasted. But heat is valuable. So in the new situation, what we do is we place the servers inside of uh, residential um, technical uh, rooms where the heat is generated for the tap water. And instead of having just um, fossil fuels being burned to heat up tap water, we actually use green electricity to um, run our servers that heat up the tap water instead. So the difference that that makes is, is large, because um, we are able to use more green electricity because there's less pressure on the electricity net. It's really good for the, for the electricity net itself. It's, we don't have to build data centers, because um, boiler rooms and like uh, technical rooms, they already exist. People have these rooms in their uh, residential blo blocks. And because of our heat reuse, 
the net result is actually a carbon reduction. So this is, this is the key to what we do. And the way we do it is we move out the compute nodes from the data center into what we call leaf sites. And that's where most of the electricity is used. And uh, so we, we barely need any data center footprint. And uh, most of our uh, energy consumption gets reused as hot tap water. And this distributed data center works as any other data center. It's a uh, uh, 60 microsecond uh, distance. We use uh, 100 or 200 uh, gigabit connections between the data center and the, and the leaf. So, so, so it works as a, as a single data center. And uh, the reason that we need good connections is, of course, because that we put the computes at the, at the leaf sites and the storage is inside of the tier 3 data center uh, together with the control plane. So, so we deploy OpenStack in the data center, all the controllers are there, and then we deploy all the um, compute hosts uh, on the leaf sites using KOB and Kala. And this is me installing one of our uh, racks at a leaf site. So you can see this is a um, this is actually, I think, a heat exchanger. I'm not I'm not our uh, um, thermodynamics uh, expert, but uh, this um, is another colleague that uh, is installing another rack at a at a leaf site. So uh, we have a bunch of those, and uh, I'm going to give the microphone to uh, Stig. Hang on. I just need, okay. Thanks, sorry about that, guys. So um, you might wonder what is the open infrastructure story uh, to doing this? And, um, and actually, it's fundamentally, um, everything in here is open infrastructure. In order to make this system, we're using Linux and OpenStack, is running largely Kubernetes workloads, which are distributed across the um, Amsterdam metropolitan area. And um, the OpenStack environment that we're building is, is based on this KOB uh, Collar and Collar Ansible um, triplet uh, substrate. And the way that we apply this is to bring about a, a sort of an infrastructure as code principle. Oops. Um, infrastructure as code principles in which we can um, use the, the properties of KOB where we have um, a, a single version controlled source repo for all of the configuration uh, for the entire Leaf Cloud infrastructure. Uh, that encompasses things like the bare metal configuration of the servers, uh, the Ceph storage configuration, the OpenStack service configuration itself, and other things besides. This meet, enables us then under a single repo to manage version control, uh, peer review, and CI verification of all the changes that we're making in order to us to in, in order to enable us then to provide a resilient and reliable service, a production service on which the Leaf Cloud users can depend. KB and Collar Ansible were chosen for several reasons, um, primarily because um, Collar is about the process of putting all of the OpenStack services into uh, Docker containers, Docker containers. Uh, and that enables us essentially to think about the OpenStack control plane as being something akin to a microservice architecture. Uh, Collar Ansible and Collar also have a very broad range of support for um, some very uh, sort of useful services for the Leaf Cloud environment, such as uh, Masakari, so that we can enable the, uh, the failover and transfer of um, workloads from one site to another site uh, when that site is getting um, taken out of service. Finally, the, uh, the KOB environment brings together this whole sort of um, infrastructure as code principle to enable us then to manage the whole thing as one coherent entity, um, which is very important, and enables us also to bring together this thing called the change pipeline. So under this uh, model, we use uh, the kind of DevOps approaches that have a, um, an abstract configuration for the OpenStack environment and a production 
variant of that configuration and a staging variant of that configuration and develop in our environments, and they're all representative of the same abstract core setup. And then we, this enables us then to develop and make changes, move fast and break things, that kind of stuff, um, in isolation, in our own in, uh, environments, and then bring those changes forward and propagate them into a staging environment in order to actually apply them and bring everything together into one place and run test suites against that, uh, before finally then um, applying those changes into the production infrastructure uh, in order to minimize the risk for disruption to uh, the users of the, the end system. And I think that was all we were had cover, covering today. So were there any questions? Yeah. How do you do it in very, very hot summers? Um, so the question was, how do we do it in very, very hot summers? Uh, well, the question is simple. Uh, people still use warm water to shower and wash their hands in hot summers. So uh, it, it, it doesn't really change. It's worth adding that um, the websites for Leaf Cloud and the website for Stack HPC are both generating hot water. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh. Oh. Do you need special hardware to like uh, water cooling things? Or? Okay, I can answer that. So the question was if we need special hardware um, to do the to do the cooling and uh, heat reuse. I think. Um, so we thought we did. Um, and we did a lot of research on this. So we had iterations with um, submersion cooling. We had iterations with, um, we had two, uh, two different types of uh, submersion cooling and we had uh, water, water cooling on the, on the CPU die. Um, and then we, we, we went back to the, to the drawing board and, and, and thought like, can we make this simpler? And we did the calculations, and it turns out that it's actually more efficient to just use a, a heat pump um, than to do any of those uh, complicated um, uh, systems f for cooling because the turns out that the, that the efficiency is actually higher um, and it's, it's easier because you actually can use the normal type of, uh, um, you know, air-cooled uh, racks, uh, and this way you get also the, the peripherals of the machine to contribute to the, to the heat reuse. So what, what happens in a, in a heat pump is that when you put warm air into a heat pump, the, the efficiency goes up a lot. And so we, go, we do like between uh, around 40 degrees of, of air into the heat pump. And then the efficiency of the heat pump is uh, like three times higher than if you would go with uh, 10 degrees uh, air into the heat pump. Uh, yeah? So the, 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 the power consumption of the leaf side depends on the, the type of hardware at a leaf side. So you have to think uh, between 10 and uh, 100 kilowatts. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so what we do is we, so he was asking uh, the, 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 the about the temperature in the in the rooms, so the room itself is not allowed to be at 40 degrees. <laughs> uh, it has to be uh, livable because people have to do um, maintenance there. But we run the air directly into the uh, air in, in inlet of the heat pump, and uh, so the the air comes out a little bit cooler, and uh, the extracted heat goes directly into water, um, which is exchanged with the tap water system of the building. Yeah? Uh, what you are doing at the heat pump is not operating. What, the question was, what do we do if the heat pump is not operating? Um, 
so uh, it, it, it depends. Um, there are ventilators that can just get rid of the air um, in, in, in case of a, of a disaster like that, a small disaster, but disaster nevertheless. And um, if a leaf site um, for some reason is really um, not capable to run, we fail over to a different leaf site. Okay, I think we have to stop. Do we have time for one more question? Uh, all right, last question. So the question is about the, the network architecture and if it's one network or uh, multiple networks. Uh, high one We, no, low latency is very important for our infrastructure because of the disaggregated um, setup. Yeah, and we mount the hard drives um, directly inside of the data center from the leaf. Yeah. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for.